Not many people know about the Tumalo project or even about this dam or the failed reservoir, but I find it interesting because it stands as a, a great monument to this swindling that was perpetuated upon all these settlers back in the early 1900s. We're on Tumalo Dam next to the failed Tumalo Reservoir in central Oregon, about four miles west of the town of Tumalo. W.A. Laidlaw was a developer who came down from the Portland area to take advantage of the Cary Act. The Cary Act was a federal program that was set up to irrigate dry, arid lands in the west. And irrigation districts were developed through this, and then they could sell lands, irrigated lands, to settlers and deliver water to them, and it would help open up the, uh, open up the arid parts of the west. There was land that was coming out of Tumalo Creek about five miles away that was just irrigating a, a, a trickle through this area. Laidlaw, however, came in. He was kind of a shyster and a con man. Got investors involved and said, we're gonna start selling these lands because the government will deed this to us in good faith that we're gonna deed it to these settlers with an irrigation system completely built. He did a minimum amount of work, um, underestimated, how much water would actually soak into the ground, underestimated how much water it took to farm the lands here, and then overestimated and, and embellished the amount that Tumalo Creek could supply to the settlers. By the time he quit the scene in, oh, like 1908 or so, probably 200 to 300 people who had bought land in good faith from him believing that they were gonna be able to farm and, and irrigate this land and they were just left with uh, dry sagebrush. He had no intention to fulfill any of these promises at all. Um, Governor Oswald West at the time referred to him and other folks of his ilk as looters of the public domain. The settlers lobbied the state of Oregon to come in and do something to fix this problem. And the state of Oregon agreed. They uh, felt that they were morally obligated after all the trials and tribulations that everybody had gone through. They came in with over $450,000 committed to build this irrigation district, which involved building a series of canals out to the non-irrigated lands and impounding over 1,100 acres at Bull Flat by building these two dams. The engineer for this was a fellow by the name of Olaf Largard, and he was from Wisconsin, originally from Norway, and he had been working on plans with a private company on how to resolve this problem, and he had come up with the engineered dam that we're standing on right now, Tumalo Dam, plus the Bull Creek Dam. In February of 1914, work began on the Tumalo Dam. This is uh, at the mouth of Red Rock Canyon. So we're right now standing 65 feet above where the ground was at that time 100 years ago. From an engineering surveying standpoint, it was an interesting dam. They built a, a core wall of concrete and steel, which at the bottom was six feet wide and then it tapered up to just a foot wide. And then around that core wall, they came way out here and built all this dirt up. And so that involved 430 men, about 280 horses. The only mechanized piece of equipment on the project was a steam shovel. So back behind us, they dug a pit about 20 feet deep and wagon load by wagon load, they would bring that up and pack it up against the, the concrete wall that they were building to build this great big huge dam. The entire project took 18 months to complete and by then the water had begun to rise and the reservoir began to fill up so they were thinking that everything was going to go as planned. Four months later in April, 
of 1915, a group of school children walking home heard a big roar and walked down to the side of the reservoir and saw that a whirlpool had opened up about 20 to 50 feet wide and it was basically draining the entire reservoir. They estimated that about 220 cubic feet per second of water were going into this, which was about the same amount that was coming into the, into the reservoir. Mind you, this wasn't the dam, this was the reservoir floor that was leaking. They tried various methods to fix this. They threw bales of hay in there. They would take 50 pound boxes of dynamite and float them and let them sink and then detonate them to try to um, plug these holes up. And they had a little bit of success with those. All of a sudden, the big funnel would stop, but then within a short period of time, another one would open up elsewhere. The engineer, Olaf Largard, prior to the dam being built, had said that the bottom of the basin was solid rock, but he didn't really know because he did not t dig test pits or do occasional drilling out there to find out. Years later, um, various geologists who studied it said that it's extremely porous despite its, its rocky appearance. And a uh, University of Oregon geologist once said that it's so porous it's like a sponge and it could probably suck many reservoirs worth of water down, down into it. And this is looking at where the reservoir would have been had the bottom not fallen out of the bottom of the reservoir. Uh, when this dam was built, they armored it with riprap, which is kind of interesting. It's, uh, it was an earthen dam, and then they put a layer of two feet thick of rock on here to keep the scouring movements of the water from eating away at the dam. The riprap's done a really good job. Of course, there's been no water here. Over here is the gatehouse. There's a tunnel that was built from the floor of the reservoir through this cliff and then down to the other side. This gatehouse had gates which they could open up and moderate the flow of water that was going to go through the canals and out to the irrigated lands. This is the outlet side of the dam. Um, so the reservoir is back behind us, and this is Red Rock Canyon, the mouth of which this dam closed up. Uh, the tunnel is right below us here, the outlet of the tunnel, and then it feeds into a concrete flume, and then that flume would take the main flow of water out to various irrigation ditches, and then it would uh, dissipate out into the various irrigated lands here. So downstream from here, there's a lot of old canals that have never seen water. They're just choked with sagebrush and tumbleweeds. In 1922, the irrigation district got water diverted from the Deschutes River into Tumalo Creek and then into this project. It never did get to be the size of 30,000 acres that had been originally promised. I believe that now 7,000 acres is irrigated. The Tumlo project was a good faith effort by the state to right a wrong which was perpetuated upon these settlers by con artists and their cronies. But unfortunately for the settlers, this great big huge project itself was a failure and they then had to suffer along until around 1922 or 1923 when water was finally delivered.